Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the High School Star League League of Legends Spring Season. We're here with Week 6, and we'll be bringing you some more uh, group stage matches. This is going to be Sandia Preparatory High School A versus South, South Tahoe High School. It's going to be a, uh, you know, this normal best of two match for circuit points. I'm Crusader Kitten. We'll be casting this with you with... What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Kevin Sokorian He, and I'm the president at UCSD's League of Legends Club. And today I'm going to be casting with you guys today. Yep. And uh, hopefully, we have a couple good matches coming up for you guys. Yep, so bands coming out so far. It looks like we're seeing Sandia Preparatory High School A, band out Elise Draven, and Gragas South Tahoe High School have been out Vi, Kasten, and Yasuo. So, a few interesting bands. I mean, we'd normally see like. A cast in Yasuo, yeah, so it's not too surprising. Vi Gragas, at least, isn't super surprising, although it's sort of un unusual to see, but no huge deal there. The Draven band's a bit interesting. I'm going to guess it's a target band. Definitely, and we do see that Vi and Kasten are pretty, pretty popular solo queue and LCS bands, just because Vi has so much utility and the ability to get to their backline and cast it in. Um, while he's going to be nerfed uh, fairly soon, if not has been nerfed already, is just in general stupendously yeah. powerful um, just for his high mobility and his ability to basically teleport out of Zanya's and get out of any bad situation possible. Yep, so first pick up here is actually going to be a Jax. So, yep, that is locked in. We've seen a bit of Jax play coming out uh, in the LCS. You know, most notably is Zion's fun in playing game. He has been a monster playing that Jax. Uh, for his team, so it's a really strong champion up in the top, and he's can you know split push. He's a great duelist, which is really important for split push, obviously. And uh, not too surpri uh, actually no, it's pretty surprising. Not many people play him, but you know, if they're able to get a good laning phase onto Jax, they can really transition that into mid game and late game. Next two picks for South Tahoe High School are going to be Pantheon and Thresh. Definitely, and Jax, of course, has fallen out of the favor of the meta. Uh, recently, just because of the t of the big three, uh, Mundo, Shivana, and Renekton, um, of course, Jax being very easily shut down in lane by both Renekton and Mundo, doing okay against Shivana, but in general, um, Jax not a very popular pick. But if he does make it past laning phase, um, he does deal tons of damage uh, late game. So we're gonna have to look out for that. And of course, Pantheon and Thresh, both very popular LCS picks right now. Thresh actually having the highest pick rate and ban rate in the LCS, um, in the North American LCS, just because of his high utility and because a lot of supports just practice him um, a ton. And of course, Pantheon um, being played exceptionally well recently by the odd one uh, most recent match. Not the one today where they got stomped by Cloud9, if you guys are watching that, but um, against, uh, wait, no, who was it? Oh, it was actually Vulcan versus Cloud9, I believe, where Pantheon was used. Um, to really good effect, but in general, he just is a very powerful ganker, very solid stun, um, and we we do see Leona and uh, Lee Sin coming down uh, on the side of Sandia Prep. Um, what are your thoughts on um, this uh, early aggression coming out with Lee Sin and Leona? Yeah, it's actually definitely uh, two champions that they would look to uh, go for some early trades and battles here. Obviously, Lee Sin being a really strong ganker in the early game. Uh, probably will see some early ganks coming out from him. Him stunning on blue side. So he'd probably go from red, uh, from blue buff to red buff. Then he could easily gank bottom lane. And if they're able to hit, you know, level 2 quickly, they can, you know, pretty easily get onto the bottom lane of uh, the enemy team. So definitely should expect to see some early ganks coming out. However, the server pick is going to be coming up here for, uh, for South Tahoe High School. And... That kind of complicates it because Sivir does have that spell shield and can, could possibly get away from any ganks coming up. But it's going to be Sivir as well as Olaf locked in for South Tahoe High School. Definitely. And we do see kind of a dunk squad coming up for Sandia Prep with um, Jax, Leona, uh, Lee Sin, maybe even a Fizz coming in. And of course, these are all champions that, given the chance, will basically jump on top of you and just give you grief. So it's going to be pretty hard for Sivir to stay alive while she does have very high movement and very high utility with her spell shield. If she misses a single step or a single E, she's going to be in a world of hurt um, with Jax, Leona, 
Lee Sin and Fizz, and of course, even Vane, now a brawler type champion, uh, now LeBlanc. Yep, LeBlanc um, locked in. Basically, everyone's going to be on top of her. Um, yeah. And unless Olaf and Pantheon can really shut down um, the back line of Sandia Prep, it's going to be really tough for the squishy Sibber and Thresh um, in the back of South Tahoe to just stay alive in this match. Yeah, they definitely need a lot of peel there for Sibber because that is a huge dive in. Um, you know, pretty much everybody on the side of, uh, what is it? Sandia Preparatory High School A, they all have a way to get into that back line to dash in. And they're hovering over Lulu, which would be really nice uh, to have a peel going down. So, my work out for South Tahoe High School, they really do need to be careful of that dive in there. Of course, Sibra has a spell shield. She can always build, you know, like a Banshee's Veil, things like that to keep herself safe. Thresh is, a pretty, is pretty decent at um, peeling. But if they put Thresh onto peel, then they lack a bit of hard engage. But they'll make up for that with this Oriana lock in here. So, I should really like this from South Tahoe High School. They have the Oriana. She can give, you know, sweet buff to her allies. Same thing with the Sibra ultimate. So, they could, you know, go for those heavy engages. Olaf, of course, will be great to jump in there. Or Pantheon. You can throw down the ball into either of those two. And they can uh, use that to engage and possibly get a really nice shockwave off. But, I mean, like, they kind of banned out, they kind of banned out a perfect champion. That would have, a perfect champion that synergizes really well with Oriana, which is Vi. Banned her out for whatever reason, so. Not going to have her in the jungle. And they, Decide to pick up Pantheon. Anyways, teams are locked in here. The San Diego Preparatory High School and South Tahoe High School. And what do you think of the team compositions that we're seeing? All right. Well, first thing I want to say is I'm really interested interested to see uh, what kind of ball delivery systems yeah. uh, South Tahoe is going to pull out today. I personally am a big fan of the Thresh Bomb, where Thresh lands the hook and then um, grabs Oriana um, with the ball. And they both fly in together and just basically shockwave everybody in sight. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, we can always have Olaf just kind of running in. Yeah. Where, you know, they come out of split from that. Um, and, of course, Pantheon uh, with his man drop from the sky. Also a very, very good uh, initiate. So I'm very interested to see um, what kind of creative ways that Tahoe can kind of pull out the Oriana shockwave. And, of course, Sandia Prep has a very solid team. Um, both Jax and Bane scaling incredibly well into late game with Lee Sin and Leona being very strong early game champions. And of course, LeBlanc for that very well-rounded mid game. Um, so it's basically going to be up to Sandia Prep to and get to that late game that they really want. And South Tahoe is going to have to be really aggressive early on with the Pantheon jungle and maybe some Olaf teleports. Um, otherwise, they're just going to get outscaled later on. Um, but either way, it's going to be an exciting match for you guys today. And I look forward to getting into loading screen here. Yep. Well, we are with that. We are going to be going over to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back to you with the game. So, guys, thank you for watching the High School Star League. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Spring Season. And we're here with the best of two matches between Sandia Preparatory High School and South Tahoe High School. And there's actually already a bit of fighting here between Zishu and Utaku Prince. And this is a bit interesting here. It looks like uh, Zishu is actually has to bag off a little bit there. So the loose is out on that for the trading. Anyways, I'm Kasei Kitten. You have a so career, I'm going to be casting these matches for you today. And um, just for a very quick bit of info on this match, it's the best of two, which is exactly how OGN actually works out, where these teams play two matches for circuit points. If a team goes 2-0, to, the, two to zero, they get three points. If it goes 1-1, one one, both teams get one point. And obviously, if the uh, team gets zero wins, they get no points. So awesome, man. I am still stuck in the loading screen, but I'll be joining you in the game shortly. Um, I will notice that this Thresh apparently is named Bunny Foo Foo. Is this the actual Bunny Foo Foo from um, Challenger uh, Solo Q? I have no or... clue. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. Although I wouldn't, I would assume no because it'd be weird if he was playing on a Smurf. If this is, because I know he definitely has. Actually, I'm not sure. You know, we'll check it. We'll check it out after after this game. We can see. Anyways, uh. Just go ahead and let me know when you're into the game here. We are into a bit of the laning phase so far, and we are seeing a bit of an early lead coming out for the bottom lane of um, South Tahoe High School. Definitely, their bot lane is pushing really well. Um, Sivir, you know, just dominating that lane with her bouncing, ricocheting, I don't even know what they're called anymore, but they bounce around and they're really annoying. <laughs> and Bane just taking a boomerang blade to the face right there. But, of course, uh, we'd expect that... Um, a Thresh and Sivir lane would be doing quite well against uh, Vayne yeah. and Leona lane. And oh, there's a hook actually coming out here. Vayne is taking a lot of damage. He's gonna be forced to back out. And yeah, this Vayne is getting really low. Already had to blow the barrier. And actually, top lane, we're seeing the double ganks coming up. Zeshu goes down for the first blood there. And they tried to go for some aggression onto Otaku Prince, but the jungler for uh, South Tahoe High School was there as well. So. <laughs> Both junglers thinking the same way, they get into that bottom lane and first blood does go over to, San, uh, to South Tahoe High School. Definitely, and this is exactly why Jax is not a very popular pick Oh right no! Um, wow! Yep. Pantheon just dominating that Lee Sin, catching yeah, him out of the white yeah. camp. Just demonstrating Pantheon's great early game ability, but yeah, Jax is just gonna get ganked mercilessly during that early game, and it does not help that Pantheon is one of the most aggressive and safe jungler is in the game right now, so he's gonna have a tough time. Gonna need to put up a ton of wards right, um, against this Olaf if he wants any chance at getting into late game. Yeah, and they're actually, he's just gonna be going around and looking for the counter jump again. And that's obviously really aggressive early Pantheon, and he was gonna get two kills for it, so he's gonna be scaling pretty well, you know, coming out. If he goes for a lot more jungle pressure, he can really change the tide of this game here. And so far, I mean, we are seeing a bit of an advantage for South Tahoe High School, obviously in the first two kills of the game. And actually, and uh, in this battle as well with the CSE that we've been seeing, as well as just aggression from the uh, Thresh Sivir lane. Definitely. Um, they're taking just a huge lead right now, just in terms of how their lanes are run. But of course, like I said before, um, South Tahoe has a really good late game, and if they manage to survive through this laning phase, not giving up too many more kills, um, they have a really good chance of coming back later. We, we see Zishu and Otaku Prince now. Zishu getting very aggressive in the top lane. Yeah. And actually taking Olaf oh, he's to very low. He tried to flash and he is able to pick up the kill. Almost goes down himself, but he's able to tank the tower shots. But he's going to have to be running back to base right now because we are seeing Paradon once again. Flash stun comes out and the spear shot to pick up the kill. Wow, that was, that was really good display of aggression by Jax. Pulls out the Fortitude Elixir, actually. I haven't seen that one since early Season 3. Um, I used to run that all the time. Really good for early game trades, but of course not very popular now after Riot gave it the big nerf bucket and raised its price by 100. But Jax putting that to good use. Um, flash for the kill on uh, Oa. Uh, oh, made made it so that Pantheon had a tough time. Bottom lane just getting wrecked right now. I do see this Vayne and Leona are at about 200 HP each and, you know, not very healthy. Um, and Sivir, of course, almost double the CS of Vayne. It's going to be a really tough 
tough game for these guys. Yeah, this is definitely going to be pretty bad for the early game, at least these guys. So, Vayne's going to have to be farming up for the late game, and uh, it's going to be a bit difficult. Server is definitely a bit more of the team fight oriented AD here. She has the on the hunt to really help her team getting into team fights. And um, she's going to be wanting, you know, probably just take down this tower, go with the team, look for dragons, look for more tires, look for pickoffs. And with the fact that Pantheon is already 3 and 0, that will definitely help out uh, that kind of strategy. Definitely. And we do see that uh, Lee Sand is coming out over here to help out the bottom lane to make sure Vayne doesn't get dived here. Although she takes another boomerang blade to the face, uh, his help might not be necessary. Um, she's just so low right now. She really needs to go back and grab some health potions maybe, but now Leona and Leeson are holding down the lane. Sivir and Thresh just not giving up on that early aggression, and it's working really well for them. Bane is just unable to farm under the turret um, with so much poke um, from this bot lane. And of course, looking down in mid lane, we do see LeBlanc going down onto Orianna. Um, Pantheon coming oh. in, barely misses the shockwave. That was yep. really close. Flashes out of the shockwave right there. That was really nice actually coming out of out of the LeBlanc right there, going to deny, you know, possibly more kills or assists for that Pantheon. And I'm going to be looking over at top lane a little bit here. Zeshu is actually taking quite a bit of damage. He actually went for an Elixir Fortitude, so that's why he went really aggressive right there. Back when he got that kill, he actually had the Elixir Fortitude to boost up his combat stats, although... He's going to be slightly behind in terms of items now. We are seeing Otaku Prince rush for that... Giant spot here, and he's just looking to be a tanky, tanky Olaf. Definitely, but if you grab at least one kill while you're on the Fortitude pot, it pretty much makes up for its cost. Um, so I would say, in terms of their gold, um, these guys are actually pretty even, about 2,200 to 2,400 gold for the both of them. But of course, Pantheon picked up the kill from Jax, so now Pantheon is actually about 1,200 gold ahead of Lee Sin. It's going to be a tough game. Um, for Lee Sin, uh, he, he's going to get counter jungled really hard right now. Thresh being so aggressive in the bottom lane right now, basically zoning out Leona and Vayne. Oh. Uh, we do see Pantheon going for the man jump on bottom lane. Yep, he's going to be jumping into here and Happy Bob is so far in the back. He is going to be going down, tries to flash somewhere and ends up going down for it. a bit of a strange flash right there and he was definitely not getting away from that one, so... No man is Del Rey. It's going to be the pick up that kill right there. And they're going to go ahead straight for Dragon here. Uh, going for that early aggression once again. And Dragon, one of the best things you can do. Pantheon, of course, really good for securing that early Dragon because his passive will block every second or third uh, Dragon hit, depending yep. on how many spells he can spam. But Dragon goes to Purple Team, and that's going to be a 3k gold lead for them at 9 minutes here in this match. Yeah, South Tahoe High School able to pick this one up, pick up a really early lead right here, and this is gonna be nice for them. They're about you no know, 3,000, 3,300 gold in the lead right now, and this is definitely working out. Bottom lane, the box being dropped down for a lot of damage onto Messi here. The man Del Rey gets dived on by Happy Bob, but Happy Bob cannot do anything about this. Ends up getting some damage himself for that one. Oh, middle lane, the shockwave. He's getting shockwave out. in the yeah. middle lane. Really that aggressive play there for Moriana, gonna force Lee Sin back. Moving into top lane, we do see Zishu struggling to farm against Olaf here, in danger of getting dived very hard right now. He's gonna have to go back or risk uh, feeding another kill to Olaf. He does have 1200 in the bank, probably gonna have to pick up um, a phage or some early game item because he's not doing so hot right now. Pantheon securing his red buff. Probably going to head down to uh, middle lane, where all the action seems to be right now. Uh, looking at the gold, we do see Oriana having a huge farm lead over LeBlanc. Uh, 30 CS up, uh, 10 minutes into the game. And LeBlanc, of course, not known to be the... Of course, uh, everyone maxes Distortion first nowadays, um, so she's not so bad. Um, I think Oriana's just doing a great job of zoning oh, around. Oh, bottom lane on the hunt being used right there, and Sivir flashes, she's looking for the kill. Onto Vayne, Vayne goes into the ultimate, throws on the condemn, but the auto attacks come through, and Sivir picks up the kill. Meanwhile, middle lane, Oriana LeBlanc going for some duels, right back down to bottom lane, they're going for the dive here. As they are able to pick up the tower, LeBlanc, uh, no, Leona trying to dive in, ends up going down himself, it's gonna be a 3-0 Sivir now.
Football over on Lee Sin coming in here, trying to securing uh, some kills, but he's oh, going to get hit by Thresh. That's yeah, going to be a lot of trouble funnel. for him. Um, nice final hour tumble by Bane, condemning Sivir into the wall, but of course she did cancel her auto attack, um, which of course does not do a lot of damage. In fact, basically it does no damage. Um, so nice try by Bane, um, a little more mechanic practice. Uh, you'll be doing those 1v2s in no time. Yeah, it was, you know, a little bit difficult right there. He was pretty low on health, and actually... Oh! Jack's flashing for the Orianna wow. recall in middle lane, but just barely not able to pick up that pick. You gotta hate Got a little right. greedy right there, but nice try. He's gonna have to head back to top lane now with no flash to boot to. Yep. Uh, I'm looking to see if Pantheon's gonna go uh, top lane dive. Um, Jax is pretty low. Olaf, of course, being the prince of diving, um, and of course, the Taku Prince playing Olaf, so we're going to see if he can uh, make Jax's life a little harder than it already is right now. Yeah, I think if that Oriana actually got her recall canceled, that probably would have been a kill for Zishi right there, but just a little bit too late, and that, <laughs> this is really unfortunate for him, so he's going to have to walk back into the top lane. He's really bad on CS, and Otaku Prince does not even care about that die, he just keeps moving in to put down some harass on Tzishu there. It's really working out for him, so CS leads, pretty much everybody is leading in CS in terms of these lanes right now. For South Tahoe High School. Definitely, but I will point out that Olaf, of course, picking up the early Spectres, which of course um, makes him a little vulnerable um, to a all-out duel with Jax, who's going for a straight door. Uh, attack damage health items. So if Zishu manages to force Olaf into a straight up duel and he wins, um, Zishu might be looking to carry the game right now because the rest of his lanes uh, aren't looking so hot, especially the bottom lane right here. We do see they now 20 CS behind Sivir, but pushed all the way to the second turret. And of course, Sivir is 3 0 right now with a Bloodthirster to Vayne's Vampiric Scepter. So it's going to be tough. Pantheon. Yeah, flash over by Pantheon. Meanwhile, Sivir's being put up against the wall. Gets the lantern up and right to Lee Sin. They have to get out of here. There's the box going down. Lee Sin gets pulled into it and it goes down. Sivir with the can drops coming down into bottom lane. The Taku Prince teleported in, chasing after a barrier. Comes out from Vayne, but she cannot escape from the solo. Undertow picks up the kill. And meanwhile, under the tower, they're going for the Sublime. Can they find the kill? Three members. The South Tahoe High School going down. It'll that was a 3 for S 0 Sandia. exchange. Yeah. Sandia so that... High School A losing out on that exchange right there. And it's 5 members of South Tahoe down in the bottom lane pushing this tower. Oh, LeBlanc tries to go in, but she's going to actually find the kill onto Sivir. Goes down herself. I think Sivir took a little turret aggro right there. I'm not uh -huh. sure exactly why. Um, but she did manage to secure the kill, so good job to um, Super Silver Star on uh, Sandia Prep for picking up that kill and that shutdown gold. But of course, Jax um, pushing the top of him now. Not able to get it, but he'll probably be able to get it. But still, that was a four for one exchange in total. And of course, uh, Sauta is now going to take a 8k gold lead. Now 14 minutes into the game. That's a really big lead. And they're looking to secure the next dragon right now. I only see one pink, uh, two pinks on the entire map, and both of them belong to South Tahoe. So they're doing a really good job controlling the ward and the vision game right now, which of course is going to be what decides um, the objective game in this match. So if um, Sandia Prep wants to get back into this game, they're going to stop team fighting and uh, really try and secure some vision control on the map right now. And so taking a look, a look over at builds right now, obviously it's a huge leap for the members of South Tahoe High School. And they are... Uh, I mean, like, Pantheon's going for the straight up damage right here. He has a Bloodthirst and two Long Swords sitting in his inventory, and he is just looking to put down pain onto the enemy team here. So they're gonna be going down. I'm looking for this one. There is a Solar Flare coming out, but no follow up onto that. Zisha here dueling yeah. Olaf in the top one, but that's a huge minion wave coming. He does not want to fight inside that, so he's gonna back off to the turret, and that's gonna be a free dragon for uh, South Tahoe. Yeah, Bunny Fufu possibly looking for kills. Is condemned against the wall. Has to back out and... Obviously, the Sandia Preparatory High School has to be so careful with this bottom lane. Definitely. Um, we do see that Vayne Liana now about... What is it? 
25 CS behind um, in terms of CS, but of course, Sivir just taking a huge um, kill lead, and she's gonna be a lot stronger. Oh wow, and she's dueling out Lee Sin here. She's in the middle though. Four members of the enemy team ends up going down. Meanwhile, Manjob's gonna be coming down onto this. It goes down, picks up a kill, a double kill coming out here from Pantheon. Now looking for Leona, picks up the triple kill, jumping into the fight. And finds even more kills for himself. 8-0 and 1 here for Paradon and Pantheon. That was a really sick play. First off, you saw Super Silverstar basically melting that Sivir, and that would have been a great play for Sandia Prep. And then comes out the Oriana Shockwave by IROC194, basically pulling everybody into the gigantic circle. Ultimate and the man jump, of course, just coming down, decimating everybody, picking up the triple kill. That is exactly what I predicted in Champion Select, the ball delivery system. Um, not exactly a delivery system, but a combo nonetheless, and it worked out really well for uh, South Tahoe's sick play. Um, keep it up. <laughs> yeah, so Paradon now picking up the blood face there on his Pantheon, and he has just gone for massive, massive damage in Pantheon. And it's, uh, it's pretty scary to go up against, I must say, as you see him just stacking up on these kills. Looks like possibly the Fertilizer up next. Um, Pantheon, if you let the jungler Pantheon pick up a Bloodthirster by 17 minutes, which is basically on par with the 80 carries farm and gold, then you know that you've been feeding Pantheon a little too much. So Pantheon dominating this game right now. Zishu trying to pick up Bunny Fufu, barely misses the taunt, I mean not the taunt, the stun. Um, so that's gonna kind of slip away. But of course, like I was saying, Pantheon is just huge right now. And if uh, Sandia Prep does not get the shutdown gold on Pantheon soon, um, it's gonna be a heap of trouble for them because their Lee Sin is, as of right now, about 3,000 gold behind Pantheon. And that's not gonna do wonders for them in a team fight. Finally, we're going to be seeing uh, a few more of Sandia Preparatory High School. The closing in here. Looking for No Man Del Rey here. Throws down the spell shield. Stun doesn't come out here. Messi goes and throws Condemn onto Bunny Foo Foo. And now we're going to be seeing IROG jumping to fight as well. Boss gets thrown down and then chasing after IROG. Nice shock wave coming out to this place too. But the teleport coming out from a talking friend from behind picks up the kill. That's happy Bob. And now Super Silver Star finds No Man Del Rey. Finishes that one up. We're actually seeing Super Silver Star get out of the wall. He's going to be running into IROC. Can he go for the kill? Yeah! Ew! Football Ogre actually gets it. Now Otaku Otaku Prince desperately going. looking for yeah. some kills right now. Trying to play cleanup crew. Janitor Otaku Prince. Barely missing that undertow onto Vayne. Oh, She's going to get away. Oh, but he's a real Janitor. Mandrop coming out from Paradon. He's coming in. And he finds a kill for himself. That on Con Entry here. Now chasing after Spear. Follows Football Ogre and finds the kill for himself as well. So, a really hectic fight down bottom. And a few nice pick offs to Sandia Preparatory High School, A, hey, But in the end, Paradon jumps in there, finds two more kills for himself. Definitely. That was a really good team fight by um, Sandia Prep, trying to pick up some kills. They did a good job using LeBlanc to pick up those squishies. But right now, um, they have no way to face Olaf and Pantheon, who are just too tanky right now. Pantheon actually about to die oh. this LeBlanc. And he's going to go legendary. 11. And oh now, um, with 8,600 gold just to himself. So that's already basically the entire gold lead um, all in one champion. So really <laughs> good job by them. Um, I will point out that there is a, a, an awesome pink ward um, uh, placed down by a purple team inside uh, blue team's banana brush. And it is actually the worst pink ward I've ever seen in my life. It is not seeing anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that. It's like right by the dragon pit. It's not even inside the brush. It's probably the most obvious one out there. And yeah, I'm that's... surprised it's still alive, actually. I I'm amazed they, they were able to find the place where they would get the least amount of vision with that ward. And they put it down. Nevertheless, so they do have four or five possible penguins that they could put down for the team, so they are at least. Zishu here dueling Otaku Prince in the top lane. It's not really working out for him, though. He's going to back off here. Yeah, but probably going to get chased though. down because Otaku Prince at this point is like, what's a turret? <laughs> What does the turret do? I'm surprised he hasn't killed that turret yet. He's gonna be picking up the kill roams down now with the team. Looks like heading over for the middle lane. Definitely Super Silver Star picking up blue, and he's gonna have to book it out of here right now because that is the entire team behind him. 
Oh, Shockwave pulls him back in. He tries to get over the wall. He goes down anyways. Football Org now under the kill, uh, under the tower. And now he's under the kill right there. Right and there. that is just the power of uh, Sivers on the hunt ultimate right there. Just giving his entire team um, about 40% movement speed. And that's going to be really hard to run away from, even if you are LeBlanc and Lee Sin, two of the most mobile champions in the game. And they're going to go for Baron right now. And it's probably not going to be contested whatsoever. That is looking be a very free Baron right there for South Tahoe High School. And I mean, this is just uh, a pretty big lead. I'm not sure if Sonya Preparatory High School Lady can actually come back from this with just how huge of a lead South Tahoe High School has. They've been playing to the strength really well. They've been keeping the kill count up. They've just been increasing their gold lead. Only a few missteps west from that bottom lane fight, but they're bouncing back from there really quickly. Picking up these objectives and 22 minutes in, Baron picked up and actually we seeing a 2v3 down bottom only Bunny Poofy is back in the brush. No man down right flashes in, Bunny Poofy is still back in. Looks like they're going to let him oh back. My Bunny Poofy keeps running away. What a great support right there from man down right. He's trying to kite this one out but he's going to go down. And uh, that was strange. Meanwhile, bottom lane Messi was pushing down that tower but he finds himself in some trouble. Paradon and Otaku Prince chasing after. He's going for the execute. A bit of a speed up. Paradon trying to close the gap. Is unable to. Is Manages unable to, to get the execute off. Uh, nice try, but it's not going to do much for the. Uh, what I see is a. Uh, what is that? 14k gold lead here at 22 minutes into the game. That is a massive gold lead for only 20 minutes into the game. That's the kind of gold lead you see in 30, 40 minute games. So honestly, right now, I'm not sure why South Tahoe is not desperately um, pushing down mid right now, because if they all group together, they could probably take an inhibitor or two. Um, right now, we do see Happy Bob, one, two, three, putting down some more words for his team. Um, first, puts down for Sandia Prep, doing a really good job of keeping their side of the map safe. So they haven't given up quite yet, uh, but they're going to have a long path back to victory. Uh, especially against this barrened up purple team Zishu right here playing dangerously yeah he goes ahead and uh finds a very quick jump out right there but this is just as you're saying a really huge lead right here for south tahoe high school it's just a matter of time before they look for a close on this might be right now shot uh -oh. got much to do box though not as well i rock finds a double kill for himself right there and that was like <laughs> right there, Sandia Prep literally just melted to yep. the Oriana Ultimate. Two of the tankier members of their team, Jax and Leona, uh, just exploding in an instant. So, Vayne and LeBlanc are gonna... Oh, Super Silver that. Star getting melted as well. Has to go for Distortion to get out of there. As well as the Flash. Double Distortion of the wall as well there. He gets low himself walking right into Pantheon. And suffering for that picking up the hook right there, we're not really gonna go in. No Mana Del Rey pushing down top oh, lane. Oh, Messi's in trouble, flashes over the wall. And barely does buff there. Barely doesn't kill her, that was really close. Um, we do see Super Silver Star trying to stop this 1v2 push in the top lane and the rest of his team coming down too, but basically, oh, uh, South Tahoe South is just there. split pushing the entire map right now. You can see right here, flashing and chasing at the Paradon, and they're looking to get a kill. The first kill at the Paradon goes down. Now they're chasing after Sivir here, and she's trying to get away. She does have the speed boost coming out from Oriana. Now she might be looking to turn this one around. Dina Blade goes in, chasing after. LeBlanc finds a kill, and the teleport coming in out here from Olaf as well, and Shockwave hits nothing. But Olaf flashes under the tower. Not even yeah, Flash is under the tower. There. I just noticed that Olaf had Flash as opposed to the regular Ghost that most Olafs take. Vayne right here doing tons of damage onto Olaf. She has her Blade of the Ruined King, able to lay down a ton of damage. So, a couple Oyana kills was, going down. Oyana ran into the base as well. Not too sure what was happening there, but ended up getting trapped in there and went down. So, that's actually four members of South Tahoe High School going down that exchange if you include the. Uh, kill from onto Paradon a little earlier right there. And a bit of a misplay because they just gave a lot of shutdown gold. Definitely. Um, there's still a 15k uh, gold lead right now, but that's mostly turrets. Um, I would say the actual kill gold. Um, Sandia Prep is actually only about 10k behind, so they have a very 
said before, they scale really well. Leona literally just walked past that pink board. Please. <laughs> yes. All right. So, anyways, like I was saying, they scale really well into late game. So, you know, if they can have a couple more fights like those, where South Tahoe does kind of a sloppy job turret diving, you know, they have a chance. No matter Del Rey being nice with this blue buff over here. Um, and of course, Vayne finally picking up her Blade of the Ruin Keen, going for her first Phantom Dancer after she gets her core eye. Um, picks up that Triforce, they're going to do a little bit of damage. And although they're a little behind right now, um, South Tahoe, not, not a lot of HP items or tank items in general coming down for anybody, especially Paragon, who we saw get <laughs> exploded in that last fight. Yeah. He has nothing to his name but a chain vest right now, probably for a Guardian Angel. So, you know, I wouldn't give up hope just well, I mean, yet. There's a Warmog and Bunny Free Free, so maybe he's just trying to make up for that going for the... <laughs> Pretty much I mean, health item right there. But no one's gonna be hitting Bunny. And drop coming down. He's looking for a happy Bob. He walks right back into the circle because No Man Del Rey was on the outside waiting for him. Very down picks up a quick kill, so this is looking to be causing the final push. But No Man Del Rey is caught between two. Has to run away from this one. Paradon flashes over the wall. But Oryx still trying to get in with those on the queue. He's going to have to back out of this one because Paradon is a scary, scary man right now. But no, they're trying to trade here. Meanwhile, inside the base, Super Silverstar goes down. Going back over to bottom lane. We do see Paradon falling, but is able to take down two with him with the help of Nomad Del Rey. With four members. Asandia Preparatory High School down. This has to be the game coming up. Flash hook from Buddy Fuku landing. The box coming up. Oh, Zishu picks the battle. He doesn't go to Iraq. He's still alive. Soul fight coming up. Zishu is able to live through the ignite somehow. And Happy Bob with the save right there. Zishu However, definitely parts of yelling this. worth it in his head right now. That was <laughs> played by him. Probably made the game for him. He's like, all right, I'm happy. At me. Come at me, bro. Coming out from Leona. <laughs> yeah, he's, that was a really nice stun there to lock down, and actually these shoes now put. Wow, Jack's doing tons of damage right now. Yeah, this is the uh, the late game Jacks that everyone fears. So no man Del Rey is sprinting away. He actually went with the kill sprinkle for barrier, but nope. Dad uh, leaps coming off from Zishu, finds the kill and picks it up. Definitely, Jacks late game has about a five second cooldown on Leaf, and. You know, it's pretty hard for you to run away from that. Every five seconds, they gotta jumps on you and kind of wax you some more. And of course, with the Blade of the Ruin King too, if Jax can get a couple more duels out, you know, a little bit earlier would have been really helpful. Now they've got an inhibitor down, um, still about 17k gold down. But of course, they're keeping the gold lead at about the k for a while. You know, maybe we could see some miracle comebacks here. They are picking up Jax you know, the game, so that's about to be a, a glimmer of hope for Sandia Prep right here. Leona finally going to pick up. She's not. All right, so. Oh, they finally pick out that dragon, but it's been there for a while. And actually, we're uh -oh, so messy getting, getting ran on. Oh, no, the man the man now. Very quickly. Very done with the kill. Flash over by Happy Bob. That was an awesome Mad Life hook by Bunny Fufu, who predicted exactly where Vayne was going to tumble. And now Happy Bob is in a world of trouble right now. No turret for him, so he's not going to have much to run to. Kick away, though. Shockwave lands onto the sin. Good guy, Football Ogre, saves Leona, but dies in the process. And now Zishu is going to run to his bot lane turret, saying, help me, turret. He's looking for some. Not too sure how much you can help, though, versus the... Uh... The ever so fed team in Tahoe, uh, South Tahoe High School. Definitely. Olaf has not been one historically to really mind running under that turret aggro. Um, basically the best diver in the game. Yeah, well, they're gonna be going for the Baron now. And this should be a very easy pick. Uh, we do see Zishu kind of running down there. Uh, they do have a pink ward there, so they do know what's going on. Zishu not gonna go for the miracle crazy save. Um, he's gonna pick up this lane farm instead. Um, but with that Baron, they are surely going to push down the middle lane and make some plays here. Maybe get another inhibitor or the Nexus turret. Um, yeah, how far they're ahead and how much is boost them in the lead with the Baron buff. This is really should be an easy victory right here. Messi gets jumped on Football Orc though, is the one that gets annihilated. Destroyed. Yeah, it gets completely deleted from the map right there. And this is looking to be the victory right here. They can push down this on the oh. last of Andal Ray. He's going down so low. He's able to live for a little longer. Messi tries to go into the 
Zishou gets taken out. Everybody going out. Okay, already finally goes down. Zishou gets in there with the kill, but he'll be going out himself. Going down with a double kill. And he's able to live as well. And that is going to be Ace coming out. GG's coming out. Hot school, and just Stand here, Fred. That one last kill on Mana Del Rey. Um, just to say, yeah, you guys won, but we got you good. So that's going to be a, a, a good game <laughs> for these guys. Yeah, this is going to be a game going over the Sonya Preparatory High School A. Oh no, the South Tahoe High School. And after a few of the shenanigans coming around, there we go. So that's going to be next. Going down South Tahoe High School, pick up the first win of this match. Guys, thank you for watching High School Star League. We'll be right back to you with the second match, uh, second game of this match between so between Sanya Preparatory High School A and South Tahoe High School in the High School Star League Spring Season. It's week six of the group stages. Thank you for watching. We'll be putting up a very quick ad break. Be right back to you with the next game. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Spring Season. We're here with the second match, uh, second game between Sanya Preparatory High School A versus South Tahoe High School. I'm Crusader Kitten with So Korean. I'm going to be your cast is for this game. First game did go over to South Tahoe High School. No, definitely. It was a really huge game for South Tahoe. They basically steamrolled their way through mm -hmm. the early game with the Pantheon and Sibir leading that early game aggression and they basically converted that into tons of towers, tons of dragons and tons of barons for their team and ended up I think about 17k gold ahead mm -hmm. um, by the end game so that's going to be um, a tough one for uh, Sandia Prep to come back to but it is a new game we do see Elise and Vibans coming out already and we're going to see what Sandia Prep can do this game to bring themselves back into the season. Yeah as well as Cassidy and Draven and Fizz, so um, interesting Fizz ban, but it looks mostly just like the bans they saw from last game. It seems that you know, uh, no bans. Oh no, there's the Draven ban. <laughs> I mean the uh, Pantheon ban. So Sunday Preparatory High School, 
didn't really like pair down's uh, Pantheon right there because they dominate the early game right there and they go ahead and ban it out very uh, uh they need that ban <laughs> definitely that was a smart ban uh, by Sandia Prep and um, definitely they went for a very late game composition last game and uh, this game I kind of want to see them go for less of a risky composition especially when you're behind um, you really need to kind of get your team together, um, make some early game plays, um, and play safe champions that everybody has practiced in the past. That's definitely going to help them um, with their morale to definitely kind of crushing to get beaten that hard. Um, I don't think they took a single turret that game. If so, Wukong is going to be locked in here with South Taha High School. So with Pantheon banned out, this could be the jungle Wukong that we've seen so often coming out. I mean, I wouldn't be too surprising if it's gotten really popular. What are your Definitely. thoughts on just jungle Wukong? Uh, Wukong is kind of like um, Warwick. Um, he jungles really well, um, has that attack speed buff. His ganks pre-6 are kind of lackluster. He can kind of go in for an EQ, but can't really follow up after that. But his ganks post-6 are just amazing. Mm -hmm. EQ into Cyclone. Um, does about the damage of a full HP champion, um, plus the combination of whatever lane he's ganking, dealing some damage. Wukong is definitely going to be a huge early game presence um, and late game presence. Never really um, scales down because it has a huge AD ratio. So if Wukong can stay ahead, he's going to do a ton of damage. And even if he doesn't stay ahead, he's going to be really tanky uh, with a lot of CC, that decoy, and of course an armor penetration. Um, reduction um, debuff. Uh, so that's always going to be useful. So great pick by Seth Tahoe. Um, we do see Nocturne and Caitlyn yep. out of Sandia Prep. Of course, Nocturne um, kind of fell out of favor recently. Um, but, you know, still a really good solid jungler. It makes ganks happen when they usually can't happen just by way of his massive range ultimate. And of course, that darkness is really useful. And of course, Caitlyn, really safe laner. So, good job to Sandia Prep, not going for the vein this game, which I would not have approved of. Um, they really want to win that early game this time. Yeah. I love how you say massive range alternate for Nocturne, when then like, and then early game, it's, it's, really, it's a really tiny range, really. And it's still longer than yeah. most early game gap closers. Yeah, he's, he's able to, you know, like, kind of bypass wards, but it's like a huge gap closer, but it's still useful, of course, for diving in and getting onto, you know, the back line, the enemy AD carry. Mercing Vayne and Ari locked in. Definitely Vayne and Ari. Now Seth Tahoe basically saying, hey, you couldn't play Vayne last game. Now well, Bunny Proof was picking up that Vayne for his team. And of course, Ari, very popular pick in the last uh, couple of splits. Um, just able to do huge burst damage if you can land those skill shots. But of course, we did see, um, I believe it was, uh, what's his name? I rock 194 on uh, Oriana last yep. game. Threw down some awesome shockwaves. So if she can land some awesome charms this game, it's going to be uh, a really tough mid lane to beat. We're going to see what Sandia Prep does to counter that Ari pick. Maybe a swing pick? We're actually seeing the Alistar locked in here. And uh, for the picks for Sandia Preparatory High School, we did see Thresh and Shivana. But Alistar locked in here is a pretty interesting pickup. And Alistar Vayne is a pretty strong bottling combo. I mean, they have a lot of displacement, obviously. Alistar having to knock up as well as the headbutt. Uh, Vayne has a condemn as well. So they have a lot of displacement, a lot of CC as well. And they trade really well. And they'll be going up against, they will be going up against a Thresh and somebody else. Uh, a Thresh and a Caitlyn, actually, in the bottom lane. Definitely. Vayne and Alistar, of course, well known to be that... Um Rush Hour bot lane favored by Double Lift and Afro <laughs> yeah. So we're going to see if they can throw out some more um, LCS-style plays. Unfortunately, we have an Oriana on South Tahoe this game, so no um, cow delivery system um, has been popularized in the last week. Um, but we do see Kazakhs coming out, and Kazakhs, of course, one of the best dunkers in the game, basically jumps around and plays Leapfrog with your team squishies. So that's going to be really fun. Um, Shivana pick up by Sandia Prep, of course. A really, really solid top lane. I've never seen a Shivana not really do at least decent for his team. Just because Shivana is just so tanky and still does tons of damage. Um, I love Shivana. 
-hmm. Personally, I think she's the strongest top lane right now, just because it has, just because of how versatile she is. Um, she can blow the Ruin King for chasing and damage for split pushing. She can go Sunfire, tons of HP for those team fights where she literally will oh, wow. zone out your entire bot lane by herself. So Zeph just got locked in here for Sandia Preparatory, or, yeah, for Sandia Preparatory High School, and that's really interesting. So they have a two, they have three Diamond Champions being Thresh. Uh, Nocturne and Shivana, and then they have the back line of Caitlyn and Zed, who are really long range pokey champions. Um, I would say that Zareth. Yeah. Oh, actually, I thought you said Zed. It's actually Zareth. <laughs> Zareth, of course, yeah, yes, Zareth. very long range pokey champion. With the recent <laughs> rework to his kit, his ultimate can actually hit you from about yeah. two um, full resolution computer screens away. So. <laughs> That's kind of scary, honestly. Yeah, I've seen videos of man. Zeret killing Darren from like mid lane, or like stealing your red buff from like mid lane, and basically doing everything he wants from mid lane. Um, so that's going to be really fun to watch. And yeah, definitely, Sandy have kept going for a lot of global presence in this one. Nocturne, Caitlyn, and Zareth is basically a global in his own right. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I want to see some early game picks out from Sandy or Prep if they want to, you know, kind of secure that early game lead. Yeah, possibly right when you know they both to level six, they might be going for some room. But of course, we have to see how it all pans out here. It's South Tahoe High School versus Soundia Preparatory High School. A South Tahoe South Tahoe High School is up one game in the best of two match right here. Of course, it's match for sake of points. It's Soundia Preparatory High School A is able to pick up this win. They uh, get one point for South Tahoe High School and themselves for getting a tie. So. Really quickly, looking over just at the standings of these two teams, South Tahoe High School is actually one place above Sanya Preparatory High School A in the group, which is Group K. Um, the split into groups like a few teams. Um, they're actually one point in the lead. So if they're able to pick up this win, they'll be boosted up quite a bit. They'll have seven points. And they'll be able to claim a much higher spot than they are right now, which would be... They would be tied for, like... Uh, they'd be tied for like sixth place or so in the group of South Tahoe High School. Pick up the win. Sanya Preparatory High School A pick up this win. They go ahead and enter a four-way tie for like seventh, tenth place or something. It's weird. There's a lot of ties in this group because it's all about circuit points, and circuit points create a bunch of ties for people. So if you want to check all this out, though, you can go ahead and head over to our website, to our website, lol.hsstarleague.com. You can find all the groups all the standings for the High School Star League and everything there. There's a lot of information to process, so good luck. Guys, thanks for watching High School Star League. We're going to be playing a quick ad before we get into this game, and we'll be right back. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back.
Legends, spring season here with game number two between South Tahoe High School and Sandia Preparatory High School. A South Tahoe High School up one to nothing. Sandia Preparatory High School looking to tie this game up in this best of two match. I'm Crusader Kid in here with So Korean. Going to be a cast for today. What's up, guys? Um, starting off the game, um, this is, is, of course, the uh, second game in this best of two matchup. Um, South Tahoe took the first game pretty convincingly, and now Sandia Prep on um, purple side is actually looking to bring it back uh, for their team. So I'll be rooting for Sandia Prep personally because um, I really want to see a uh, comeback from this game. It's not caster bias. It's uh, <laughs> underdog. Rooting for yeah, you always for you always want to see the underdogs re, uh, win. Always good to see upsets. Definitely. Um, in this early game, we do see a defensive stance from both teams. Not a team really wants that early game cheese to happen for either side. Um, Sandia Prep probably kind of scared of South Tahoe, and of course, South Tahoe doesn't really want to give Sandia Prep that early game lead when they're so confident in their solo lanes. So, not going to be a lot of action going down, but of course, we do see Nocturne starting at blue buff, Wukong starting at red buff. It's a little more aggressive. Um, I do hear that a lot of the times um, Wukong uh, will go for early jungle invades because his level 2 is one of the strongest in the game. So, we could see Wukong going for his red buff and then straight to their red buff to fight Nocturne there. Um, we're going to see if that actually happens, though. So. Yep. So. Looks like a red buff started coming out here for Paradon. Possibly just wants to get into the blue buff for a little bit longer. Uh, or, you know, possibly go for an early gank onto top or mid just within the blue buff second. So possibly not going to be seeing a bottom lane gank, which, you know, may not happen just because, uh, you got to wait a little bit for Thresh analysis to level, uh, Vayne analysis to level up before you can really go for a huge gank. And they're actually getting poked out pretty hard right here. Obviously, you know, Alistair, he's going to be suffering a bit in this lane. Both of the champions for the side of Sunday Preparatory High School and the bottom and have a bit of range on them, so they're able to kind of poke him down and harass him down. Definitely. Um, it's going to be a really close matchup. Of course, Alistair and Vayne, um, also very aggressive, but Alistair really needs to land those WQ combos. Messi right here getting a little dangerously low, and Alistair just going to pop him up right here. Gonna be really tough for him to get back from that. First oh, blood wow. going down to Mana Del Rey. And now Happy Bob is getting exhausted down. And that was a nice amount of really aggression coming out there to pick up that kill. That'll be very nicely done right there. So. I would say that was a little bit of a misplay yeah. coming out. Wow, flash headbutt pulverized coming oh, out. Oh no, Mana Del Rey gets the kill. Auto attacks not coming in fast enough for Happy Bob. That's going to be a really huge early game lead. You do not want to give Vayne those early kills. Like I said before, Wukong now going down onto Nocturne. That is a lot of damage coming out from a level 3 jungler. So like I said before, Wukong, very aggressive early jungler, going to be taking a huge lead onto Nocturne as well. So we're basically seeing a repeat of last game right now with every single lane now pushing down, except for mid lane, where Xerath is doing pretty well for himself, actually. Yeah, so this, uh, I mean, that's obviously once again Paradon really looking to be the dominant jungler and really just putting on some early game pressure. As we saw from the last game, he really just, and he found the first blood, he found second blood inside the jungle, and he was able to snowball off of that. So he was looking for the same thing. Wasn't able to find the kill, but was able to force Football Org out of the jungle. Also forced the room to blow his flash. Definitely. We do see now that Caitlyn and Thresh are kind of being forced back to their turret. Of course, Vayne has not gone back yet. So this is actually the best time of the game for Caitlyn and Thresh to make a comeback before Vayne can get her items. Because once Vayne goes back and cashes in that CS and those two kills, she's going to be basically unkillable in lane to Caitlyn and Thresh. So if Thresh can land a really good hook about right now and they can make some good plays um, and secure Caitlyn some kills, they might be able to reset the lane. Um, but of course, Alistair is saying, nope, get out of here. This is my town. You can't milk these. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's really he's got, he's starting to be a lame bull. And after, you know, picking up two kills to side this one off, it's definitely going to be uh, a nice lead going down for him. So, K 
Kaylin actually did not go, I mean, Vayne actually did not go back after that. Not gonna have the item advantage there, and it might allow some possible early aggression from Sunday Preparatory High School, because they did pick up boots, so a little bit faster. But they do have to be careful, of course, because obviously Bunny Free Free definitely displaying some good Alistar mechanics right there. In the last definitely. Uh, demonstrating exactly how to zone out a Caitlyn with Alistar. Of course, Caitlyn, um, if she wants to get away from Alistar's headbutt pulverized combo, she has to basically, uh, that is not going to be good for Happy Bob. He's going to get condemned straight into a Wukong there, and Paradon's going to pick that one up really easily. Yeah, that is <laughs> a pretty dead thresh right there. He goes in and walks back. Walks back, makes sure Messi uh, gets out of there alive, but this is not an early start. Uh, this is not a the good start early that they were start. looking for, <laughs> definitely. It's not a good early start for Sunday Preparatory High School. Like, South Tahoe High School are getting are getting what they want from this game so far. Definitely. It it was actually a little bit of a misplay by Happy Bob123. You really shouldn't be that close to an Alistair. Um, the thing about Alistair is if he gets his pulverized off on you without having to use headbutt, it's pretty much a guaranteed headbutt back into their vein. He's gonna in turn condemn you even farther away from your team. So against Alistair, you either have to stay far enough away from him that he has to use his WQ combo to hit you, and in which case he won't be able to push you back, or you have to be uh, able to brawl him straight up, and they can't do that right now. So, um... Bottom team for, uh, I mean, oh, bottom... Super Silver Star is taking a lot of damage here. Irock hitting level 6, going for him, but Football Org is there to interrupt and go ahead and push him out of there. But Super Silver Star had to blow the flash in the barrier right there, and that was just... Right upon hitting level 6, Irock goes in for a kill and is able to force uh, Super Silver Star back quite a bit. Definitely, we do see an early pink ward coming out for Sandia Prep, that's a Super Silver Star. So he's going to be looking to control his jungle. Um, but he needs to control oh no, his lane. the charm coming off. A nice stun, though. Irod could possibly go for a few more auto attacks. Whoa, the last one goes through and picks up the kill. Super Silver Star juking a little too hard there. Let Ari get in that last auto attack. And when she didn't have much mana left anyways. But uh, Football Ogre is going to come over here and pick up that extra CS. So no harm done as of yet. But Sandia Prep really needs to focus on... Getting out of their laning phase. Oh wow, Happy Bob is going to pay for that hook right there. He's running for the lantern, but he is surely going to be going down right there. And the thing is, you know, when, <laughs> when you pull in that Alistar, you have to think about this. You have to think, do I really want to pull someone in? It's actually on a flash. Pulverized flash away coming off of Messi. He's able to escape, but you have to think, like, do I really want to pull the Alistar in? Because he can pulverize and knock you back with the uh, Bacon Dead coming up here. Paradon coming in, trying to steal the blue buff. He'll pick up a kill and steal the blue buff. And he'll get out of there alive. Uh, already a 3k gold lead coming out for Sandia. I mean, not Sandia, perhaps Stop Tahoe. This is looking to be a repeat of last game. Every single lane now is pretty much winning for Stop Tahoe. Kazakhs and Shivana. Kind of dueling it out there. Shivana too tanky for Kazakhs. Straight up kill on Shivana not really doing enough damage either to kill Kazakh. So that's going to be basically the most even lane um, in the game. But of course, this vein is now 4 0 She has 3,000 gold in the bank, which means when she goes back, she's going to have a straight up um, Blade of the Ruin King or whatever she wants to build. You no, know, Irock might be going aggressive. Super Silver State try to get him off of the pink wood right there, but he goes in and the charm secures the kill. Irock getting these early leads right here. And that's really scary. So, you are seeing uh, Bunny Fifu goes back as well, picks up the mobility boots as well. That's getting to Nomads with Dala. Meanwhile, top lane, Otaku Prince finds the kill. Zishi try to turn around last second right there, but goes down himself. Bunny Fufu, I mean not Bunny Fufu, no man at all, we're actually kind of AFK and them right now. Basically deciding, what am I going to do with all this gold? But she's going to pick up that Play of the Ruin King uh, and take it to lane. Yep, um, I just straight up Play of the Ruin King. That's a really nice early lead. <laughs> definitely. Against Caitlyn's nothing but a BS sword. That's going to be pretty much... Oh, top lane. Ataki Prince is in trouble. Football Org is diving under the tower for him. He's able to find the kill, but flashes away right to Paradon. Right Still a really good play by um, yeah. Football Oak. Kill for his team. For, uh, his team right there, so that's a plus. Definitely. Going to be a morale booster for them. But they're going to need a lot more than morale to bring back this game. They are so far behind right now. About 4k gold behind. And this vein is going to be a monster late game. 
Point of the ruins being at 10 minutes flat. Yeah, so... Oh man, I'm just... I mean, you know, last game it was... Leading this battle, not by kills, but a lot more by uh, CS, and now we're seeing uh, pretty much a gigantic kill lead right here for South Tower High School in this bottom lane. They're Definitely just, happy about right here. Just... Mobility beats on Bunny Fu, it goes in. We do put the knockback onto Happy Bob. He's getting low now, and he should be going down for a few more auto attacks. Does go down, steps onto a trap in the process, but. Oh, actually, Messi, he's trying to turn this one around. Condemn against the wall, though. Messi gets knocked up as well and knocked back. And Bunny Foo Foo is the one to pick it that kill. Nice shake coming off. Well, in middle lane, Iraq finds yet another kill for himself. Definitely. South Tahoe's bot lane looking so strong right now. That Bane pulling off all sorts of tricks um, on Caitlyn. Using Final Out to tumble behind Bane to dodge the tilt over Peacemaker and then condemning her into the wall. So that's going to be a free dragon for South Tahoe and of course securing an even bigger gold lead. I believe they're gonna be at about uh, 6k gold ahead after this dragon, that's correct. And ZC trying to duel Attacker Prince in the top lane, but opting for that early Tiamat, Kazakh is gonna be very hard to duel. Man, it's gonna be really tough for um, Sandia Prep to make it back from this one. Yeah, that is, I mean, <laughs> This is an even bigger lead for South Tahoe High School than last game, and they don't go with, you know, their kind of fooling around shenanigans that they did last game with, like, flashing into any enemy base and stuff. This is probably going to be a very quick victory right here for South Tahoe High School because they have a team that's going to snowball this lead that they have just picked up out of control. Um, getting a lot of kills onto the vein is obviously just a terror. And, and it's the fact that they've been doing really well. It's not that he's just like a fed vein, but he's a fed vein that has a really capable Alistair to play to making some really nice plays to get all those kills down for him. And Definitely. Um, the bot lane for Sato has proven to be more than capable. Oh, wow. Nice hook by Happy Bob. Oh, no but No Man Down Rage just decides to go in here. Throws down the ward. He's trying to fight this 1v2. Throws on the barrier as well. He's looking for the kill. Barrier is coming up as well. Messi does go down, but he is able to pick up the shutdown with the last auto attack right there. Paradon now coming in. Flash over from Happy Bob. Play away as well. Flash in from Paradon. Trying Ooh, to get the second that was a really slow, good but trap. Oh, the trap! The trap. He gets baited by the cupcake and not able to pick up that kill. So, really nice play by both Happy Bob and Messi, showing that they have some mechanics too. Happy Bob pulling off a great hook and then a great escape, and of course Messi um, kiting around that bush pretty well, able to pick up that vein shutdown gold and a little bit of a morale booster um, for their team as well. So that's going to be really good for Sandia Prep. Um, if they can keep that up, you know. Maybe. Nemo on the uh, middle lane. We did see Iraq. We actually didn't see that. I saw the kill. I saw the kill feed. I rock found an yet another kill for himself. Now four and zero, and I mean, uh, not too much you can do about that because that's this always having such snow on. This is why always is a very you know highly contested pick is because she's a huge snowball champion. And I fell out of favor, but I mean, if you make it work, it's still pretty scary. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why um, Super Soulstar opted to pick the Zerath into Ari when Ari is not being one of the the most mobile. Um, champions in the game, and of course, Zerath getting picked off here actually. So he's gone. Down by three, and once again, it goes down. But like I was saying before, Ari is actually well known to be kind of a counter for Zerath, so he kind of counterpicked himself um, by picking a champion that relies on people staying in place against the most mobile mid in the game. So I'm not sh exactly sure why they decided to do that. Bunny Fufu now going on to Messi here, or not. Actually, that was a sick escape using the white camp to get away. Yep, and uh, we do see the bottom entire is gonna be going down, but from the behind, Irock comes in and finds the kill for himself. Frisco was not into Zareth right there. Put off Thresh goes down as well. Getting died, not even getting died, he just got chased back. Oh, now he's getting. Now Nocturne back not up now. Dive. Almost gets died, but Zareth is there to go ahead and you know, run a bit of uh. Just run him away right there, but. Three members, three of the strongest members probably for uh, South Tahoe High School pushing this bottom lane. They are looking scary as they should be able to pick up or at least do some decent damage to this tower. 
definitely. If Zerath gets hit by basically anything, Alistair now coming around. Zerath is going to be very dead if he actually does go for that. But if Zerath gets hit by a single Charmer or Condemn, he's basically dead. Um, actually, South Tahoe are going to back off from this one. They know they're a little low on HP. Um, you know, something I will point out is that Zishu in the top lane. Oh, here's the diving though. Four Metal Five members actually coming down here. Box gets thrown down. No man and Del Rey goes down himself. Now chasing after Irock. There's the Zareth Ultimates coming in right there. Ace in the hole as well. Blocked by Fubu with the flash, but Fubar gets in there. Knocks him away. But here's the Dragon's Descent, and Zishu finds the kill. Now chasing after Irock, but it looks like Irock's a little bit too fast, and he's able to get away. A nice sacrifice, though, by Bunny Fubu right there. Definitely, that was a really good play by... Um, oh, Paradox coming in here with the Cyclone, knocks up two. He is able to find the kill. Otaku Prince is the one who jumps in there, secures it. Paradox gets killed for himself as well. Tries to get into Messi, but he's able to escape right there, although a little bit low. And uh, Paradon and Otaku Prince with a very, very quick response. They're getting down to middle lane, pick up two kills, with only Otaku Prince going down. Definitely. I, th I believe that was in total a 3 for 2 exchange in favor of Sandia Prep. Um, so they did really good for themselves in that very drawn out team fight. Um, definitely looking at Zishu to carry the game right now. He's actually the only positive member on this team and doing really good for himself. Actually matching CS um, with um, Otaku Princess Kha'Zix. Um, and up and kills 3-1 right now with the Sunfire Kick to boost. So he's really looking to be the tank and kind of the the uh, center for his team right now. Yeah, and we'll be seeing some push in the middle lane here. I mean, I think uh, South Tahoe High School, they're definitely starting to end this laning phase. Looking, the ground. Looking over at the map, there's actually some really great wood coverage from both of these teams. A lot of wards in the jungle area. And uh, it's really surprising to see Sandia at High School being so behind. They are keeping up in the ward coverage, coverage around the map. That being said, South Tower High School pretty much have the entire top half of the jungle of Sanya Preparatory High School A eh, lit up by wards right now. I mean, they're looking to you know see if they can possibly get some pickoffs and just keep controlling this map. Tend Definitely Paradox looking for, looking for Dragon right now. Um, and he's going to start walking towards that. Going to be starting the Dragon by himself, actually, while Bunny Fufu and Ira kind of scout out the jungle, make sure nothing's going to interrupt their... Wow, Super Stills are getting caught oh. out and getting instantly popped. Wow. Godlike Iraq 194. Oh, meanwhile, no man's all right. Flashes onto Messi under this tower. Straight up diving him, barrier coming off, and Messi's still alive. Man's all right, gets the kill, but goes down himself. Wasn't quite able to print out. There's like a few, there's like a sliver of health left right there. So, um, and actually, hold on, hold on. Or like, oh, gets knocked away from the lantern, but it's also knocked away to safety. And just get over with the paranoia because there was an Ari walking towards him, so it ends up not being safe. Here down the kill. That's Bob is down to the right side. Another kill. Another Definitely kill. really good plays by uh, South Tahoe once again, picking up all of those kills in the jungle for free, basically because they kind of did the. Uh, the fanatic kind of sit in a bush and wait for them to come to a strategy. Um, but it worked out for them, so good job to South Tahoe once again. Now with a 10k gold lead in 19 minutes. Now when you 10k gold ahead in 19 minutes, you can basically do anything you want. And unless you get aced a couple times in a row, um, enemy team is going to have a really tough time coming back. Um, so it's going to be really tough for Sandy to prep come back from this one. We do see Zareth now picking up that blue buff. Now Zareth does have really good wave clear so if they wanted to they could stall out this game for quite a while but the moment somebody gets picked off um, by a charm or by a Wukong ultimate or an Alistair combo basically South Tahoe has the ability to instantly melt anybody because basically um, one CC will mean Kha'Zix, Wukong, and Ari just jump onto you. Yeah, like Ari just jumped onto going Zareth. down. Meanwhile, Bali no man's already he's dueling out. He's dueling three. Gets a double kill. He's still kiting around. He gets feared away, but he's turning up for more auto attacks. He picks up a 1v3 triple kill. 
Meanwhile, top lane, an actual global ace coming on Utaku Prince of 1v1s. And that was a 20 minute ace for all <laughs> and every single lane there finding some kills for themselves. But oh man, I think the highlight that was no man's already. I mean, he's a really fed vein, but nevertheless able to 1v3 right there and pick up a triple kill and live. Definitely, that's the problem with having a very, very strong vein. Just the lifesteal basically gives her twice the effect of HP um, that you would normally see on an AD carry. So she did really well for herself, cutting out uh, all of those abilities and uh, picking up that triple kill. Of course, Zishu, um, very close duel in the top lane. Happy Bob here, now getting caught up by Alistair. He's going to get headbutted back. Yep, and that's going to be Thresh going down there very quickly. And it's... This is looking to be, I mean, it's obviously an even bigger leap than the last game. And, uh, South Tahoe High School are definitely looking to get, you know, this game going very quickly. Tower is down in mid and bot. They have to push it for those inhibitors, and actually, just gonna keep looking for more of these picks that allow them to push in. They've been going in onto Doctor. but he is trying to get out, but he cannot. And he goes down, they had to kill going over the no man, Del Rey. Now chasing after uh, Caitlyn, goes down to Ari, Super Silver Star, he's gonna get multi right here, and that's a double kill for uh, Iraq, and they're gonna keep this one going around, they just ran a lap inside of the base right here, and they're keeping going for these kills, Paradon finds one for himself, and that's four members, the San Diego Preparatory High School A, going down in quick succession. Definitely, that was... Basically a straight up turret dive uh, by South Tahoe just because um, Football Ogre kind of got caught up by Alistair right there. Um, so that was going to be tough for them anyways, but basically ran around the base, picked up a lot of kills, and now um, 14k gold ahead at 22 minutes into the game. Um, so South Tahoe is probably going to go back, pick up some items, and then look to either Baron or straight up push an inhibitor to close out the game. Um, right now, because they are so far ahead of this one. We do see a 13-3-3 vein um, with about 4,000 more gold than the Caitlyn. And that Caitlyn is actually doing really well for herself. Second most gold on the team. Um, Shivana, of course, leading the team with 6.4k gold. Oh but... no, I see a dead Zareth. No, never mind, he's alive. Okay, I, I, I saw an Ari getting real close, and I was like, oh, that's definitely a dead Zareth, but... No, nope, he doesn't. He decides, you know, back down this time, and uh, he just goes back to farming. And nope, never mind. Nope, never mind. There it is. He goes in a little bit later, and he is able to pick up another kill. Already diving in there, but it's a one v two, one v there. I guess. Yeah, it's a one v three now. And shut down right there. Finally, going a little bit too aggressive. Possibly way too long for that kill. And got. He will be pulling in Zishu. Talk to Prince trying to dive in right here, but he's going a little bit too far in. Happy Bob is able to live for a little longer. Zishu with the kill. And a little bit of over aggression coming out from South Tahoe High School. Definitely. Uh, Vayne and Wukong were down pushing down bot lane and middle lane. So that was actually a 5v3, um, one at a time, which is basically um, the easiest kills you can possibly get um, for Sandia Prep. So they picked up those kills, no problem. Um, but even with those shutdown gold, um, I don't know if they're going to be able to make a giant comeback right here simply because they are still about 15k gold behind in this game. Um, they're going to need to pick up some, about 20 more picks if they want to get back. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they just need like a few, you know, a few more kills, you know, maybe like 20 kills to even up the scoreboard a little bit. Um, they really need to get these items going down. They're probably going to need like a bunch of armor, more mugs armor on each member of the team. There's going to need a bunch of randoins. You no, know, they're pretty close, right? Definitely. That's easy. That's easy to get. Come on. Classic mistake by uh, <laughs> Sandia Prep right now. Moving outside oh, of their no, base. Oh no! Polarize coming get out to three Cyclone with the follow up. They're going get out to everybody here. They're gonna clean this one up. No man is already dominating now. Gets a double kill actually diving and he's still chasing after Messi here. Can he pick up this triple kill? Barrier coming up. He does. Here for himself. Here comes a Zareth ultimate picks up the kill. Meanwhile, under attack. He Cannot survive. He goes down himself. That's only Super Silver Star kind of, uh, staying alive. But he's able to finally get a kill for himself, though. So that's that's good. Yeah. Um, we did see Sandia yeah. Prep kind of get a little over aggressive. Um, rushed out of their base, out of the safety of their turret. 
um, or they could have wave cleared for a long time and instead kind of ran out, tried to pick up somebody, and that's exactly what South Tahoe oh. wanted. They really wanted to. Oh wow, I rock getting picked off by Football Ogre. That's yeah. gonna be a free kill. That's a little too long right there, so he goes down. He took like four tower shots, trying to get into Super Silver Star. He really wanted to get, you know, the 11 kill. I, I, I'm pretty sure Super Silver Star has fallen every single time to Ari. I could be wrong there, but I feel like there's a very strong chance that that's true. Definitely. Okay. We'll yeah. go and pick up the dragon for South Tahoe, and they're going to be looking to make some more plays across the map. They do have the bottom inhibitor down, which leaves Baron basically uncontested. Not saying that it would have been contested even if the inhibitor were up, simply because South Tahoe is so far ahead. But at the very least, um, Sandia Prep can literally not leave their base right now, um, which is probably good for them because so far, every time they've left their base, they've gotten picked out. I'd say their best course of action would be to kind of turtle under a turret um, and use their at the Kaelin to wave clear and, and, and Thresh to flay people away. Um, but instead, so, they're going to start pinging the Baron. So South Tahoe High School have uh, two pink wards in that one bush by the Baron. You know, the one where no one walks in, so they're obviously still there. Because, oh, hold on, actually, no man, the Ray's going for a 1v2 here, flash away. But he keeps going in, nice stun coming out though, and actually a lot of brace damage from No Man Del Rey. And actually flash in as well! They're all going in for this AD carry, and they find the kill. And he gets way too over aggressive. That's like, man, that's happened quite a few times right there. Taku Prince leaps over the wall, he's able to get out. Uh oh, no, Happy Bob, what are you doing? Why are you there? He's gonna go down IROC with the kill. And they, Happy Bob, they, getting don't go a little. Of your base. A little too happy for his own good, and now Super Silver Star looking to get caught out. It would have barely escaped, but no, IROC is now running into the base after Messi. And the Ignite is just gonna tick away, and Messi's gonna go down. IROC is too now, high level. So the, the Super Silver Star going down because all he can stack up behind the towers. Now Zishi's gonna be coming after as well as. Well, or they seem they can do anything, but. Slim chance that they're able to defend this base without the rest of the team against the, uh, the Everfed members of South Tower High School. They're just sitting inside the base right now, waiting for the team to push in because they can go for this tower or go for football or he goes for the paranoia. He dials, dives, dives, you're trying to somebody there, but he ends up going down the top of the pitch. ball gets out with the flash. Very quickly from under that tower there. He to live a little longer. And for some reason, Shivana is deciding to save her ultimate, her dragon form, which makes her, of course, a beast in team fights, but she has not used it in a while. So I'm not sure what she's saving it for. Uh, uh, Ray is trying to solo this Baron right here. It's not going too well. He's kind of losing a bit of health. He's trying to let to go back in and he goes down. All right. Nice job, Mana Del Rey. Good job. Um, close one. <laughs> that was pretty close. Yeah, it get that's like about half health. Not bad for an AD carry, of course, <laughs> but of course she's going to need a lot more life skill to solo Baron at 28 minutes into the game. I've actually tried to do that. There was there was a time where when like when there's like when the server like just started to happen, where every where you get you got stuck into champion select, right? So then everyone was stuck in champion select. But when I finally got into the game, I was the only one in game. It was a normal game. I was the only one into game. I just, I was trying, I just like farmed all the ways, and I was trying to get it to where I could like kill everyone inside the fountain. But they had like a thousand armor and MY didn't break out. So anyways, meanwhile, Sandia <laughs> basically got destroyed, and the Baron was not stolen. Wow, and South Tahoe is surely gonna push down the middle lane or the bottom lane. I would never have guessed right that would have happened right there. <laughs> anyways, I mean this game is pretty much over at this point. I'm surprised it's actually gone on for 30 minutes to be honest right now. Uh, this is surely going to be a game that leaves a lot of objective towers and stuff. Definitely. Like Zishu, the lone defender of his base right now, but he's not going to be able to do much damage against a 16-6-4 Bane. I don't care how tanky Shivana oh, is. Oh, Fufu is heading not. into 4 right now, and he could sell their lives. Who would have guessed? He should continue closer here. Flash Cyclone going in. He'll knock him onto so many. They gotta find the kill onto Caitlyn. And we get sent outside of the fountain right there. But Nexus Tower is going down. First one's down already. There's just one left right there. Happy Bob gets pulled in. And the talking Prince with the kill. Right, going after Super Silver Star. Trying to run laps around the Nexus right there. But Football Oreg is under this tower. He is in. 
world of pain right there. So that was kind of annoying. He goes down to I Rock. And this is this is gonna be the game right here. I'm gonna Ray gets inside of the base right now. He's looking for a few kills right here, but they can easily close out this game right here. And this is going to be South Tahoe High School picking up the 2-0 victory. And they get three second points for this win and they go into a two-way tie for seventh place. Good job to South Tahoe. Really a convincing set of two for these guys. And Sandia Prep, nice try. Um, put up a good fight. Um, in some of those team fights, but really losing behind in that early game. So, really good job to South Tahoe. Such early aggression, uh, much power. Yep, so guys, thank you for watching the High School Seller. We're going to be right back. We actually have a few more matches up for today. It's actually going to be a best of three match for League of Legends for Charity. We're gonna be coming up soon. We're gonna get a little bit more information on you know what's going on with the stream and whatnot with that. But that's gonna be the end of the high school starling matches for today. You guys will be right back. Gonna play a very quick ad and uh, we're gonna get some more information now. I'm gonna be getting into a few more matches today. So guys, thanks for watching. High school starling very quickly. If you wanna check out more of the high school starling action, you can check out our website hsstarling.com as well as our Facebook and Twitter. Both of those are uh, hsstarling as well. Um, and subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash high school star league. If you like the stream, you want to see whenever uh, we're streaming and whatnot, go ahead and follow us on Twitch. You can find all of our information and contact info down below the stream player and all that good stuff. So, guys, thanks for watching. Going to play a very quick ad break, and uh, we'll be back whenever we have the next match.